Hey, what's up? You're here with Nick the Informative Fisherman and today we're going to be discussing the crab snare. Uh, what I have here is just a standard crab snare. Uh, there's a few different types, a few different sizes, but they all virtually work the same. Um, what it is is a bait cage here that you would pop open. You can grab the uh, little rubber band here and pull that tab open. And you can see that it pulls open there to where you can stuff your bait and your weight inside and a substantial amount of weight is important when you're out fishing in the ocean. You want a good amount of weight to uh, hold that cage down there stationary to the bottom. You want it to hold steady. You don't want it to be drifting around the whole entire time um, which is going to make it more difficult for the crabs to actually lock on there. Um, so what happens is as, as you count, uh, cast it out there, you want to give it some time. You want to give it a good, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you find works. You can start off with 5 and retrieve it if you have them. And 5, then good. You can stick with that. Otherwise, count it out to 10, then do 15. If you're not on them in 15 minutes span, uh, move on to their spot. So actually how this works is the crab would crawl on here and he would have a claw on here. And every 10, 15 minutes, whatever you're working over, you would start to pull it in slowly, okay? You want to cast out there a couple times first and start to pull in your cage slowly and get used to the feel with no crabs on it. In that case, when you do start to retrieve it slowly and you feel that there's some weight on there, then set the hook. And what happens when you set that hook, it'll fasten real snug around a claw like this here. So you retrieve and the crab comes right up along with that. Um, so it's important not to just jerk it up and I'll tell you why if you just don't if you just jerk it up and you don't feel the weight on there what you're doing is all that scent that you just put off on that in that area from your bait cage here and your snare is now wasted so you hop this out of the pitcher well heck now all the chum smell that's right here is not really going to apply now they have to go retrack it down over to here uh, so you want to just just gradually pull it if you don't feel the weight let it sit give it another five five minutes you know if you're consistently not catching crab right. within a 15 minute time margin then move along that's what it's all um, about. so that's how that works here here's a, another example of another crab snare um, one a, another good tip that I can give people when you're crab snaring as you can see on this one here where is it then the swivel is on the edge so when you're retrieving your cage is coming through the water like this it's a little bit more aerodynamic uh, versus if you put the snap swivel right here on the side of the cage you would have much more water resistance as it's pulling towards you and that can cause these snares not to fasten down as tight and you can lose a lot of crabs that way uh, so on a cage like this you would want to snare it right on the end or a corner but you could see it's most mostly more aerodynamic actually hooked right on from there so it retrieves straight at you so uh, aerodynamics is important for the uh, snares to fasten tightly to the crab Rock on. Uh, another thing, one of the big mistakes I see people making off piers is they throw the traditional crab pots and how this applies and why does this apply to crab snaring uh, is when they throw them down they look like a big basket or a traditional crab cage. Most people know what they look like. What they are doing is attracting sea lions. Sea lions get used to these when you're fishing off piers and that's a free, free offering that you're giving these sea lions. Um, so when you're fishing crab snares, try to get away and make further cast away from the actual crab cages um, because the sea lions will patrol the crab cages looking for that free offering that a person put down right in the middle of their crab pot. Oh, and they'll eat it up. And what they're doing is also patrolling your cage now, which is uh, causing more attention to what you don't want to bring attention to unless it's a crab. Now also when you are crab snaring, uh, one thing you want to pay attention to is your line. A lot of the time you get out in these windy rough waters or you're fishing piers. I, I use a very bright fluorescent green uh, monofilament or you can use a brighter braid. If I'm fishing close to the pier, I'll use mono. It's very durable. It can, uh, it can take some abuse. And uh, by using the fluorescent green, if I'm shoulder to shoulder with people, I can spot my line a whole lot easier and know if I have too much slack in there and I'm drifting across other people's. Um, when you're making long casts, I prefer actually using braid because I can really feel the sensitivity and the weight 
as I start to pull it, I can feel if the crab's actually hanging on there and then set that hook. Uh, with the mono, you have a lot of stretch, so it's not as easy. So a short cast, you can get away with mono, uh, but if you're making long casts to get further out from that pier and fish areas that people have uh, not pounded as much over with their crab snares, and you're trying to get further away from people's crab cages that are attracting sea lions, then I would definitely go with a, a 30 pound braid or a, a 40 to 50. Get real heavy line. The heavier line is important when you're using a crab snare. Um, you're going to get a lot of resistance. If you loop a couple crabs that I'll show you later on in this video, you're going to get a lot of resistance and you don't want to use you know, anything under 20 pound test line. Otherwise, um, you're just asking yourself to potentially break off. It can get clipped by a piling and a barnacle can cut the line, snap it, or can come up and rub against a cement wall and also snap your line that way. Jeez. So aside from that, I mean, there's really not too much more to, that I can possibly give you in the way of knowledge for uh, crab snaring. It's really about your timing, having the right tackle, and, you know, just follow those few crucial steps, and that should pretty much show you the way. Here's the difference between a red rock crab and a dungeness crab. Obvious, obvious difference. It's clearly just their name. Yeah. That's a lot there of is no difference. Them. What you're seeing is exactly the same. This dinner right here. Got eight dungies, one red, good size red. You can see here the pattern on the bottom. Light one here, the females. Narrow here, the males. Should make for some uh, delicious dinner. Uh, yeah. That's where it's at right there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Probably that guy. Yeah. Poor little crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, um... He's going for one second. 